and like I, like exactly what you said i reckon one of the most important things in life now if you want to be successful is discipline and it might not sound flippant cool because you're like why i want flexibility in my life no if you want flexibility you need to be disciplined otherwise you'll never enjoy that flexibility because you have to focus on something 100 percent. it's so true yeah. You know, and, 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 and discipline is, is huge. It's so huge. And all, all the successful people of the world, if you were to dissect them, and obviously you've spoken with a lot of people on here, guys, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pattern. You've probably seen that there, there will be disciplines that people have, rituals they do every day. Mm. And that's why they're successful, right? Because they're, they're programmed in. It's like we, we, we do things every day consistently and we commit to them over time. And that's where the results come. You don't just get them overnight. Mm. You definitely don't get them by jumping from thing to thing every mm. couple of minutes. And it, it's nobody's fault. I think it's just the way people are evolving now um, through the world. There's, there's so much choice. There's so much to choose from. It's very difficult to stay focused because it's like, well, I don't know what I like. Do I like this? Well, actually, this is not bringing me joy. It's not bringing me fulfillment. It's not releasing the dopamine in my brain. I can't, I don't like this. Let's go to something else. It's like, and then mm. usually it's those quick fixes of, I don't know, likes on a Facebook post. And it's like checking the phone, dopamine mm. hit. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, well, you've got to be studying. You have to be doing your training. Oh, that can wait. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, it's very difficult to manage, I think, with, um, with a lot of people, especially as kids. Mm. And that's why it's very important that they don't develop these habits early on. And you see it in the street now. There's, there's adults walking around like plugged in all day. Like yeah. just doing nothing, just like scrolling on social media and they don't know they're doing it. And I'm a bit of a strange one. When I go out into the coffee shop in the morning, I like to engage with people, <laughs> isn't it? It's mad, mad. How you want to interact with other human beings like crazy. Who yeah. would think that? <laughs> they're uh, like, hey, what's wrong with this guy? He's like saying hello to me. Like, is, he, <laughs> is he a bit weird or something? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it, it's, it's true. You know, but again, we were mentioning earlier the people of Wales, kind of say good morning and things, but um, you, you just go into a Starbucks and everyone is like glued mm. on the phone. And I mm. sit there and I'm like, I just want to chat to somebody. I feel yeah. disconnected, you know? Yeah, I feel yeah, disconnected yeah. from people. Hey, how's it going? It's like, hey. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you know? bud. Exactly. There's, no, there's no depth to any of them, you know? And it's, it's, it's a shame. Mm. It's not everyone, but it's, it's, very, it's very evident in society, I think, today that that's what's going on. And there's, there's got to be some sort of intervention. But so, bud, two years ago... Uh, you had basically um, a big decision to make, or you made a big decision. Uh, you had served for 18 years um, in the army uh, in various different roles. Uh, like you said, you're a combat engineer uh, in, at the Royal Engineers. You were a sergeant major in the Royal Army Physical Training Corps. And then you decided to pack it all in. Now, it wasn't an easy decision, was it? Hmm. No, no, absolutely not. It was... Um... I even still question it like now. It's like, did I, did I make the right move? It's like, <laughs> and yeah, absolutely I did, but it's still, you know, questionable. Uh, and not many people get it. You know, not many people can fathom it because again, we, we are our own limitations. We all have our own beliefs and we all have our own ceilings that everyone's capable of smashing through no matter what level you're at. But again, it's what you believe. And you know, the whole, you know, people call it cheesy or whatever, but what you believe you can achieve. And I, I totally, I, I stick by that. And I still will, you know, no matter what anyone says, I stick by that every single day. And I think, you know, once I, I'd done, I mean, I started to kind of listen. Have you heard of Jim Rohn? You, you must have heard of Jim Rohn. Yeah, uh, my, one of my favorites. I, I have like, I've subscribed to all of his stuff. And I, I listen to something Jim Rohn every day as part of a, like a ritual. So even if it's just 10 minutes in the morning, it just, it brings things back in line. You know, it's like, I was worrying about that. Shut up. This is good. You know, we're, we're, we're okay. And it brings things back into context. And these teachings are just like, they're timeless. You know, you, he, he was talking 30, 40 years ago on stages and you listen to a speech that long ago and it's still impactful now. Mm. It's the same. Nothing's really changed. And it was one day I came back from work. I was working in Purbright where I did basic training, where I went for my selection. So I went back there as an instructor to train the recruits and help the injured recruits. So I was running all the rehab at the um, army training center for the recruits. So if they got injured during training, they would come over to me and I would kind of help them not only with like mindset and belief and all that sort of stuff, but also physically as well, doing stuff that they could do that were in their means. So they weren't out running with the troops because they were injured. They were doing stuff with me indoors 
to keep their fitness up, right? So that was kind of like my role there. I loved it. A great role. One of my favorite jobs in the army that was because you used to get to shout at recruits and really beat <laughs> them. And, but the thing is with recruits, this is the great thing. They're like sponges and they, they want to learn, right? They're there to learn and they, they listen to you. When you get into the, the field army where people are kind of conditioned to, I know best, this is what I do. You shouldn't be telling me this kind of thing. Like, like old dog, new tricks again, right? With the recruits, they're brand new, they're keen, they're bright eyed. It's like, tell me what I need to do and I'll do it and I'll listen. And they do. And then that was the great thing about it is because they, they wanted to learn from you. So it was good for us as instructors because we could go onto the gym floor and onto the shop floor and actually start doing what we did best, which was educating, coaching, all these people who wanted to be coached. It was great. Mm. I loved mm. them. Great, great, um, great role in the military. Um, so where was I going there? I was like, totally uh, just gone off this, on one now. This is, this is about, um, I guess, your transition from... That's it. Yeah, got it. So while I was at Purbright, um, I had a good friend of mine, James. Uh, he's doing very well in, um, in the network marketing space at the moment, like really well. Great guy. And um, yeah, and, we, and he's a good friend. You know, he's a real good friend. He said to me while I was in, because he was in the same cap badge. So we were, he was in the PT Corps. He just left. And I'm like, why is he left? You know, I was inquisitive. Like, why is he left the PT Corps? He was doing pretty well. Um, and he sent me this video and he just said, oh, you should go watch this video. Um, it's a guy called Jim Rohn. This is in 2013, 14, maybe. And uh, it's when I just got back from Afghanistan. And um, he, um, I watched this video. I got back from work one day and I put it on the, on, the, on the iPad. I had my dinner on my lap. I was still in my uniform. Mm -hmm. And I turned, I turned this, um, this video on of Jim Rohn. And it's, it was called How to Have the Best Year of Your Life. Right? or the best year ever, or something like that. And it was four hours long. It's a four-hour video. And I'm like, four hours? Wow, okay. It's, it's like, it's half six p.m. Um, I'll watch a bit of it, and I'll, I'll watch the rest tomorrow. Anyway, four hours later, I'm still there in my uniform. I have an empty plate, like, next to me. And I, I remember standing up and just thinking, oh, shit, my, my life's just changed. I'm, no way. Yeah, like that. Just like that. My, my path has just changed. I had a lot of notes on my notepad and, and, and I couldn't get, I was kind of like feeling guilty. It was like this guilty feeling of, well, hang on. I feel guilty towards the army because my eyes have just been open to what's actually possible outside of the army. Right. So it, it really opened my eyes up to what's, you know, what the potential there is out there and what other things you can do. Cause I'd done like at this point, it's like a 16 year point. So it's quite a long time of the same stuff and different things. Great time I had in the army. What was the, the message in there that kind of spoke, what was the actual thing that sparked, like, you know what I mean? Like, what was the message there? I, I remember exactly what it was. It was something uh, that Jim said about um, how we all fall into our, like, safety blankets and our safety secure routines, where if you really took those breaks off and you went out and you, you, you've seen how much potential a human being can have by uh, taking those breaks off, putting yourself in different circles of people, learning from people who are already like higher up and successful in the world and you put yourself around them rather than staying around your usual circle, you know, all these things can happen. And I've always had this kind of like, what else is there? You know, from a young age, like from the age of like five, six, like, cause I've seen all these people doing all these things, people having nice cars, nice houses, you know, more fulfillment, more money, more travel, you know, you know all, everything. So it's kind of like, well, why, why don't I have that? So this has always been subconscious from a young age, mm. but I never really explored it because I didn't have any direction or any guidance with any of it. So it kind of just stayed there. Didn't go away subconsciously. It was all programmed in from a young age. But then that video brought it to the front. Mm. And it's kind of like, oh, wow. Now, now I understand. It was, like a pen, it was like a bucket of water in the face. It was like, <laughs> I remember standing up and going, my life just changed. I tried. <laughs> Waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour and up in the air. Stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick, so 